All right, so uh, does anyone want to do a recap from last time, what we did with uh, trying to find that third treasure cache? Recap, anyone? Yeah, James, James go ahead. Went into that <laughs> greed mode. <laughs> uh, my mind blanks when I try to think of that stuff. Uh, it was the big green crystal. Yeah, the big green mountain the with the, okay. the one side of the mountain being green. Yeah, we went in there and... Uh, we saw a giant diamond, and I, I tried to run in there and, and, and take it, and uh, then it, it exploded, and two, uh, two shard crystals, green shard greed crystals uh, came off of it and started attacking us, and I have a, Curlioa has a, uh, a, a greed, anytime he sees money. <laughs> He gets all excited now. Yep. If it's a thousand gold, so it's I mean it's really got to be, it's got to be really expensive for you to for that uh, that boon to kick in. But yeah, that's what you guys yep. have done. You guys have gone into that uh, where uh, Verata store that third treasure cache. It was the the only mountain in the Gray Peak Range that had this green tint to it. So you guys had found two entrances actually, one of them being trapped. Uh, and you guys actually had some really good rolls last week. You found the entrance, you went in, you found uh, a couple of uh, swarms of rats, all kinds of pits that had you know the, the, tr the rats inside of them. And then you eventually found this massive chamber that had two dead frost giants in the middle of the chamber where they had obviously been battling and probably affected by that greed mode as well because they actually had fought each other. Uh, there was no chest. Someone had taken the chest, so obviously there had to be either a third or fourth giant involved that was not affected by this greed moat. Uh, when you guys entered the chamber, the greed moat started attacking. Uh, no one was affected. I think everybody was uh, safely not affected except for Curlio, and then he started having these uh, illusions of, of grander where his party members were walking towards him, although they weren't. Uh, you know, and he heard these whispers in his head saying, you know, kill your party members. They're going to try to steal all of your stuff. Uh, and he was, he eventually fought that off with the help of the rest of the party. So then you guys uh, had found, uh, you guys chopped up that uh, huge uh, jade crystal, made quite a bit of money on that too. So now you guys are traveling to the fourth treasure cache. And uh, here you go, I'm going to share the uh, handout with you guys. And the, the fourth cache is the one where Verata Store was talking about an abandoned dwarven outpost. And this dwarven outpost, you know, many, many years ago was used for basically weapon smithing. And uh, somehow, you know, over time, this mining station was overrun by something terrible in Morta, as it states in her notes. And uh, it caused the dwarves to leave. And since she's also been informed that there's been a lot of uh, subterranean volcanic activity also that's been reported in this area. So that's the, uh, that's the mountain that you're headed to this time to check it out to see if you can find that fourth treasure cache. And uh, you guys have had a, a long rest, so I'm going to give you guys a, a long rest in the tracker. Now... On the journey to this Dwarven Mining Outpost, I want one of you guys to give me a, a D20 roll in the tower. Oh, in tower. Oh, wow, nice. Nice roll. So as you guys are traveling to this, to this uh, fourth location, all of a sudden, off in the distance, you can start to hear some squeaking, and you guys are all kind of walking uh, on one of the trails. You know, you, you look down uh, to your right, and you can just see a thousand, thousands of feet down to the bottom of you know, the ground where you guys started climbing up. So, you know, it's a beautiful day outside. You know, you could see large birds flying around. You can also see, you know, mountain, mountain goat kind of shimmering up the mountain as well. You can see all kinds of little small animals, lots of lizards and spiders and cobwebs and all that stuff as you guys are walking up. Well, you're on this very narrow road that is kind of 
kind of going so you're you're kind of coming up to the peak of this well at the same time that you're coming up to the peak of this obviously someone else is because you can start to hear some wagon wheels squeaking and you hear what what really sounds like some hard stomps and then you can see a couple of banners kind of popping up over the crest as you guys are walking up to the top of this hill so as you get to the top you you kind of come face to face with what appears to be a uh, an elf that is on a wagon and this wagon is being pulled by this massive sized lizard and this lizard has is all kinds of different colors in the, in the shades of green. It's like a dark green, a light green around its face. Uh, it's got you know drool hanging off of it, and it's got you know har uh, harness on it like a horse would. And it's pulling this wagon, and this elf is sitting at the top of it, and he and he stops. He pulls the reins on the lizard, and and this wagon stops, and he just kind of puts his hands up, and he goes. Hell, friends. Uh, I will call back to him and say hello, and Elvin. Ah, he he nods and uh, he speaks back in Elvish. He says, "Ah, my name is Lethmere. I am a traveling merchant of the Gray Peak Mountains. Would you need me to stop? Do you need anything? If not, I will continue on my course." Uh, I will translate for my uh, non-Elvish speaking friends here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So do you guys need any... Uh, this traveling merchant, his name is Lethmere. I'll ask, uh, you know, where, where he originated from. Where did he... Where has he passed through recently? Since my we're friend. heading in that direction, is there anything of, of note that we should keep an eye out for? Uh, there's really not much of the... The occasional kobold or occasional goblin, but not on these uh, ranges of the Grey Peaks. It's it's pretty safe. Uh, now I will, however, tell you that there are some giants that are far to the far to the west, and also there was some activity some year ago with some dragons. But he says that uh, I am from Cormir, and I've been traveling the Grey Peaks for probably the last probably uh the last 100 years or so. Hmm. And I'm just your simple traveler. And he has a, you know, you can see all kinds of stuff hanging off of his off of his wagon. You know, barrels and 10-foot poles and, you know, swords. <laughs> you know, and he gets down real gingerly from his from his wagon, from his seat and he, you know, kind of stumbles a little bit as he's getting out. And then he opens up the side of his wagon and he says, oh, "I've got plenty of wares if you're interested." And he opens, you know, opens up a like a a double door on the top of his uh, on his wagon on the bottom, and then he walks around to the back and he opens up another door and he says, "Yeah, everything here is for sale. I am no hoarder, but anything you need, I have." And he has basically <laughs> anything in the. Anything in the player's handbook, all of the different kits, you know, like the tool kits. He has, uh, you know, rock climbers gear, any kind, anything you need, healing potions, anything that's in the uh, player's handbook. Okay, cool. I mean, I think I'm fully provisioned, provisioned at this point. How about the rest of you? Um, yeah, I think I always, I'm okay. I could always use more healing potions. Well, I got five. Do you think we need more than that? No. <laughs> uh, I'll buy another healing potion from him. Sounds okay. like a... I've only got four. You know, I can't have Curlioa surpass my healing potion count. You know, that would be bad. <laughs> <laughs> there's not a really know, a whole lot to... Uh, there's really not a whole lot to spend your money on in, in Adventures League, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah. You know, you pretty Carousing. much limited. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't even think you're really able to do that either, uh, actually. But we we've done it a couple times. But uh, well, left me here. You have anything that's worth over a thousand gold that Curlioa might be interested in? Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit under a thousand now because of my last carousing. Uh, I think I got robbed. Somebody I'm got me with drunk your greed and... mode to kick in. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> 
He says, no, I, I'm just a, a simple traveler and a simple merchant with simple wares. He says, there are several others that, that travel the Grey Peak Mountains. There was a, a sage that walks around with a, a couple of sacks that he keeps, these bags of holding that have plenty of items inside. He, he is very rarely seen, though. Mm. So where do you, so you, where so do you, you get a, a, a mount like this? What, where do I go? I, there's, there's, I just follow the road. All no, the where, do, where do you get uh, a lizard like this to pull a wagon? That, that's a pretty exotic sort of... Uh, oh, old know, Charlie's been there. a friend of mine for a long time. I found him out in the swamps when I was leaving Cormir as I was a, just a, a young elf. And he's been w with me ever since. He, he tried to take a stab at me with his, with his tail. And you can see his tail has some some barbs on it. He says, uh, he tried that one time and then I really kind of gave him the ultimatum as if he was going to come and be my companion or he was going to end up uh, dying by one of my blades. So he uh, has been with me ever since. <laughs> old Charlie. Old Charlie. <laughs> so that's it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, he starts right. to yeah, shut I'll just everything buy the one up. Thing from him. All right. He says, well, safe travels in the mountains, my friends. He says, uh, there are quite a few uh, interesting things if you go deeper into the mountains. Like I said, I saw some giants and also some dragons about a year back. It takes me about, uh, it takes me several months to do a, a complete circuit around the, the mountains. And I find quite a few travelers. And, Sometimes I even find dead travelers on the side of the road, and then I then I usually end up selling their stuff. So, <laughs> all right. Well, anyways, uh, Mary travels to you, and he gets back onto his on his uh, wagon, and he kind of whips Charlie a couple times, and they start to real slowly creeping down the road, and then they kind of disappear down the the side of the hill that you guys just came up. So. Okay. All right. All right. I'll double check my coins. Make sure I still have everything, just in case. Oh yeah, you got everything. Any, you, anytime you, you deal with one of these, you know, traveling. Your fake diamonds are gone. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as you guys follow Verata Store's map, you get to these. You get to the the ancient ruins where the store of an outpost is marked on the map. And the place is totally deserted. I mean, there's all kinds of, you know, broken pillars and doorways and, you know, piles of rubble. And the one thing that you do notice, though, is there are a ton of small footprints. I, there's, there's so many footprints, you know, that's in the dust and whatnot, that you can't even discern the number of creatures because there's really so many footprints. You would say you would think at least ballpark guesstimate. You would think, without even needing a roll, probably a, probably a dozen or so small little creatures, small little tiny footprints. Do you have any idea what they what type of footprints they are? Sure, you can give me a nature check. Give me a, a nature check, and maybe you can uh, maybe you can find out what type they are. Can I try a different a different check? <laughs> Like a survival check? Sure, I'll let you do survival. Right, I like that roll better. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was going to say that. That's why I laughed. Uh, with an 11, let's see. You would think that they're probably kobolds. That was going to be my guess without the roll. No. It would be something like a like a kobold or goblin or something like that, but you know you can kind of tell with the <laughs> halfling too. <laughs> no, I was like, watch the watch the halfling jokes there. <laughs> so yeah, you can tell by their by their feet. You can kind of tell that they have one one claw kind of jutting out to the side. So you can tell that it's definitely a kobold. And like I said, there's all these, you know, broken buildings. And it's actually a pretty pretty big area where all these dwarvish runes are. 
definitely been you know vacated for hundreds of years but you do find the you know you do find the entrance to where this uh, smithing temple was and I'll uh, give you guys this map now as you guys look in now <clears throat> here you go guys here's your uh, tokens here's your uh, the map now what you guys can see is a is a is a beautiful entryway and there's like a you know pillars and you know lentil and stuff and it has a couple of axes crossed up top and you can definitely tell that this has all been you know crafted by the dwarves and the light shines in where the entrance is but you can see where the light kind of ends and you, you can barely see the wall that's you know 25 30 feet in now if you don't have any kind of dark vision you know you're going to need some kind of lighting because it doesn't look like this is uh, illuminated at all uh, let's see i guess we don't have graven with us though yeah so i all of you guys probably do have dark vision now right no, uh, me and Thyber, no. though. Oh, okay, that's <laughs> no. right. Yeah. Well, I guess I guess I'll light a torch. Do you want to light you spell mage torch? Hand the torch again? Yeah, we can do that again. Sure, okay. mage hand. Well, but but Gildan doesn't need it, right? He has dark vision, right? Yeah, I don't need it, but I don't necessarily uh, want to be in there in the dark where you guys can't see me getting murdered to death. <laughs> 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 I mean, I heard, has I heard to the sky sound laying from the on me. You know, <laughs> hmm. Pseudopods punching me in the dark is not something I want to really, you know, relive again. But it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I just heard a splat. What was that? Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a silent scream up ahead. All right. Yeah. So I'll I'll uh, do a little mage hand deal here. All right. What is that? Twenty foot. Twenty twenty. Yeah. It should be twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. All right, so now, did, I'll did move you want to the scout it out before you did that, or uh, I guess there's some light filtering into the uh, area here, right? To the end of the hall, yeah, just to where you can, and then you can kind of yeah. see where the the hall takes a right. All right, so I'll I'll hold the torch uh, outside for now. Okay, sounds good. Today, because I know that's what you usually do, so. Uh, All right, see. I'll check it for traps on my way through there. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. If there's any traps, I'll I'll roll a stealth versus your passive perception, so which okay. should be pretty that's pretty good. good for you. So, all right. So as you kind of veer around the corner, you are going to see down to the end, and and this is barely towards you know where the the end of your dark vision can actually see. Now, down to the very eastern portion of this uh, room and you can see that it opens up really wide and you know so as you're kind of peering around all the way down at the end along the wall you can see and, and just same thing same thing as in here there's all kinds of rubble there's all kinds of uh, you know the architecture is beautiful I mean it's plastered walls you know etchings on the wall all this dwarf I mean it's definitely dwarvish and lots, you know, you kind of peer around and you can see two kobolds all the way on the other side of this room, which is, uh, the room is probably about 50 feet wide. This place, this place is actually, it opened up pretty, pretty massive. Ceiling's about 20 foot tall, uh, ceiling's about 10 foot where you're at, and it kind of opens up. Uh, now, as for the two kobolds, they're kind of facing one another, and they're kind of jibber-jabbering to one another. Okay, I'll, I'm uh, gonna. I'll come I'm back gonna, to here. I'm gonna talk. Turn to Thilo and say, I, "I bet you five gold Gildan gets attacked and, and knocked out again." <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'll come back and think about uh, telling Curly, "Oh, there's a thousand gold piece diamond right in the middle of the room, right around the corner." <laughs> no, no, I'll. Uh, I don't I'll believe you. And he runs in. Woo. There's two, there's two kobolds yeah. <laughs> uh, inside there, and they're arguing they were and debating with themselves. Yeah, they were basically fighting over like this haunch of what appears to be like maybe a a, a leg bone of something with meat, kind of you know nasty looking meat 
on it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this point, I'm thinking I'll probably just cast a true true strike. I'm sorry, a true strike spell on myself. Okay. And just say, shall we shall we go in and do we want to talk to him or do we want to just take him out? Uh, we can. Uh, anybody speak Cobalt? It'd be Draconic. Uh, actually, actually, I speak actually, Draconic. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> and I'm good at talking to dragons, so you know that might might work. Dragons seem to like talking to me for some reason. All right, well let's send Curlio in first. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. We got your back. Uh, that's basically I'm going to step what around you, the corner that's here. That's what you heard, Doug, as you were kind of, you know, listening and watching the, the local bolts. This is what you could actually you could actually hear them saying. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you give me bite of horse. No, no, you give me bite. It's mine. All right, so I'll, what I'll do you guys I'll tell Pilot they're fighting over horse meat right now. <laughs> like, a, like a horse. I'm, I'm going to go first and I'm going to say, "Hail friends" in draconic. <laughs> One of them is basically, you know, face deep in this haunch of meat, and then you can hear a rip, and then he snaps his head towards you, and then the, the meat just kind of, he opens his mouth, and then the meat just kind of, like, rolls out, and they both turn towards you, and they're just kind of stunned. They don't, they didn't expect you. So you say... Hail, friends, and Draconic? Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So I uh, hold the... my hand up in a peaceful gesture. <laughs> okay. That's when so... you find out Draconic has no word for friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Both, just, both just of these kobolds, right. they, they start to walk towards you. All right. And you can also see that there is a uh, scene that you're in a little bit, Curlio. You can see what appears to be maybe the end, the edge of a building. That looks like it's in this room also. And it, it's about... Uh, the building's about 10 foot. And you can just oh. see to where there's a like a building. Oh, weird. And since Curlio can't really see him, I'm going to go ahead and move the torch out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so as, as soon as this mage hand, you know, kind of goes by you guys with a, with a, a torch and comes to the middle of this chamber... The kobolds, they react as if they're like, oh, and then they kind of get down on their, their knees. They, draw, they, they were pulling their daggers. They drop their daggers, and they, they get down on their knees, and they start chanting this in Draconic, which and is mighty, while they're, mighty while they're fire doing that giant. And he's moving the torch. I'm going to cast Alter Self. To look more draconic, more uh, more dragon-like. Okay, so how long does that how long does that take? Is it like an instant? Is it like it, an yeah, it's an instant, one? and it uh, you know one it's an action, and it uh, co lasts up to a one hour okay. concentration. Though. All right, so the the two kobolds they they walk up about ten feet, and like I said, they were drawing their their daggers and whatnot, and then they they see this torch and the fire. And they just get down on their knees, and they they start, ah, and they start, you know, they start saying "Mighty Fire Giant" in in Draconic, basically, and they're just kind of bowing towards the the torch that is in the mage hand. Okay, so I'm gonna take that cue, and uh, and go with that a little bit more, and I will call out, uh, "We are here to check on your progress for our masters, the Fire Giants." Yeah, 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 yes. Uh, uh, progress is is halted right now. There is no progress, sir. We mm. we ran into you know, and, and this guy here, this this little kobold, he he gets up and he says, "May I uh, may I approach, sir?" And he and he's really timid as he starts to oh. walk forward a little bit. Yeah, I'll I'm gonna walk up a little bit ahead of uh, Gildan so that he sees me first, the uh, oh, dragon-looking. Creature, humanoid. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pull behind him here, so he's in. in okay. He I'll says, pull my yes. hood over too, so he didn't see my ears. Maybe. Okay. <clears throat> the kobold he tells you that uh, we we have run into a problem. Uh, 
uh, Master, we we met these men that were made out of stone and lava and fire. And when we tried to find treasure cache, these men came from lava pools and attack us. We had numbers. We had almost 30 of us from the tribe. And all of us, we were trying to take one of these mag magma men down. And we did. But when we did, it exploded upon its death. And that's what hurt us. Uh, if, if our fellow kobolds weren't killed, they were severely burned. So we are kind of lacking in numbers right now. And so we are a little behind of schedule. Mm. How many more of your, of your tribe are left here to help? There are 12 of us left. How 12 many of the, f the mightiest warriors of the tribe. Uh, we, we saw uh, four of them, but we had killed one. And that... And the one that one that was uh, taken down really hurt everyone else. And as you can, you know, you come in, you can see the the rest of the inside here. You can see this building in the middle and whatnot. No doors oh. on it or anything like that, but you can definitely tell that there is a a building here. Lots of rubble inside the room. Like I said, the the ceiling kind of vaults up to about twenty feet. Well, masters will not be pleased. That's why they sent us, since you were delayed. But we are here now. We will help you uh, overcome these magmen and, and retrieve the treasure as you were supposed to have oh, done. Good, good. <laughs> he gets excited. So, so lead us to where the magmen are, and we will we will deal with this problem, and we will retrieve the treasure for our masters I, as we should have done long ago. You, you I pointed the other. I point at the other cobalt and say, gather your warriors, I will teach you how to fight magmen. And I do it in draconic and like a real uh, lizard-like lisp. <laughs> give me a, uh, give me a persuasion check. Give me, both of you. Okay, are these, of are these dragons, the are these counted as dragons? Or they, they are. are they yeah, they're dragon kin. They're not dragons now, but. Um, okay, I, I get a bonus when talking to dragons. Yeah, these aren't it's dragons for sure. Yeah, but throw me okay. a persuasion roll in the tower, Curlio. Wow, you guys got clutch rolls. So both of these kobolds, you know, the one kobold that uh, has kind of, you know, come forward and has done the talking with you, um, says that we'll gather the warriors. And then he he looks back towards you, uh, Gildan, and he says, "How are you going to help us defeat?" these men made of lava and fire and the other kobold he kind of disappears around the kobold he kind of disappears around the cor corner and uh, you know while you guys are talking uh, a bunch more kobolds start to show up I will say we we have uh, skill with weapons and spells and this one and I point point back this way towards um, Philo and we say we have this corrupted halfling here with us who is who is entranced and works for us now. Ooh, ooh, can we eat halfling? Ooh, halfling no, tastes he good. is a useful asset for us because he can infiltrate the cities. But he works for the masters. And he's so a he, mighty warrior. <laughs> he no good for eating? Not this one. Only only the weaker halflings. Oh. So he he powerful halfling then. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, we powerful. We the the strongest of all kobolds in our tribe, and you know these kobolds start to come out from around the uh, from around the building, and then you can actually see that there is a door that opens also on the you know basically right uh, right here in this section, and the the door kind of just like slides perfectly. It's dwarvish architecture. And a couple more kobolds come out as well. And they're, they're holding their slings. Very good. Very good. Use your slings against the magmen to keep your distance. Yeah, only one should engage each magmen. <laughs> Up close with your uh, daggers and your swords. 
Have you delivered the other treasures from the other locations already?